comes in the name of the Lord. O King of Israel, O Sahana in the highest, the Lord be with you. is righteousness. Increase in us your holy grace, so that this sacred ceremony may remind us of the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ into earthly Jerusalem. And most of all, serve towards our own sanctification and eventual entry into your heavenly Jerusalem. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, What are we to do? For this man performs many signs. If we let him go on thus, everyone will believe in him, and the Romans will come and destroy both our holy place and our nation. Oh.
lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, we welcome you to uh, the celebration of the Palm Sunday Holy Mass. We've just blessed the palms in uh, the manner appropriate for the times that we live in now. We're forced to eliminate various parts, including the procession, including what's my favorite part, which is taking that covered processional cross and banging on the doors of the church to let everyone know that Christ is making his triumphal entry. With those things put aside, we do adjust what we are doing, but we come in glory today as we celebrate this Holy Mass. We use our contemporary rites, and we come together in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, please now make a personal and private examination of conscience, confessing your sins before our Lord and God. Having confessed your sins, please now recite with me the second form of the Confidior. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. It's an act of penance this day. I ask that you pray for our parish family as we know we should be together celebrating, receiving palms, and processing together, and spending a week together this Holy Week. I ask you to think about where you sit in your church, whether it's here at St. Mary's or whatever your church might be and to imagine where you are in your own pew and to pray for those who sit next to you. Those people who sit in front of you and behind you. And try to remember those people that surround you as you come together in Sunday worship. Whether you know them by name or by face, pray for each and every single one of them. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Open wide the door and gates, lift high the ancient portals, the King of glory enters. Who is the King of glory? He is God, the mighty Lord. Hosanna in the highest, blessed are you who have come to us, so rich in love and mercy. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, for us, your wounds were suffered. O Christ Jesus, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your Son as the Savior of the human race, and a model of humility. He fulfilled your will by becoming man and giving his life on the cross. Guide our minds by his truth and strengthen our lives by the example of his death, that we may live in union with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We now take time to hear the Word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help. Therefore, I am not disgraced. 
I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. This is the word of the Lord. Our response to our psalm is, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evil doer closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to help me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Our second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found in human appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, and of those in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held counsel. They bound Jesus and led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him, Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further response, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison. And when the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion, the crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. 
Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was not out of he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him released Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to him, To them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole court. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country in the father of Alexander and Rufus to carry his cross. They brought to him the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine, drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and his one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this was the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
You know, this is the first time I ever preached on Palm Sunday before. And the reason is simple. It's never been needed. If we have a full congregation, when you celebrate the full liturgy of the palms with the big procession and the long passion, and as we have the tradition here of having parts assigned during the reading of the passion, you get a better story that can never be told or uh, replayed by any preacher. We never had to preach before, but these are different times. This is the first time I ever used the shortened version of the Passion too. Um, again, I, uh, if you have the opportunity to uh, look through any of the Gospels to read the account of the Passion throughout the course of this week. What I found uh, is that I've had the opportunity to expound on just some incredible, incredible readings that we have heard that Deacon Jim has read for us and proclaimed for us this morning. The prophecy of Isaiah that we heard in our first reading is concerning the steel will of the one who would be Savior. It was one of those prophecies that could be read one way, imagining the conquering warrior, seven feet tall, 300 pounds, with all sorts of weapons and armor on him, or, as we read it today and imagined, the coming Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As his ministry showed, all these prophecies came to life. That he was one with a well-trained tongue. How it roused the nation. That he was always obedient to the Father. That he offered his body to be destroyed. And that his holy face would be hit and spat upon. The responsorial psalm we heard from Psalm 22, and the, the words that Jesus would later quote that from on the cross some thousand years later, in his moment of just utter humanity, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? The desperation there is just so there for everybody to understand. Psalm 22 is almost eerie to read. If we couple it with a few readings, a few sessions of going through the stations of the cross and walking with the Passion Gospel, Christ walked this horrible path that was spoken about in the Scripture. And the worst parts about the prophecies were the ones that, the ones that came true. It blends well with the second reading as well, where Paul speaks of how Christ, while living, couldn't grasp his equality with God. That he was one of the Holy Trinity. All made manifest with the prophetic words of Scripture from David that we heard, from Isaiah, from Jeremiah, and from others. All made manifest when in his moment he asked God if this cup could pass from him. And he anguishes to the Father in heaven that he was so obedient to that he abandoned him. You can see how he could not grasp that equality. Now Paul says to his letter in his letter to the Philippians that this is what makes him the Christ. This is what has given him that power that is from heaven, on earth and below earth. The same power that we will proclaim before the whole world when we get to the canon of our Mass in just a few minutes from St. Hippolytus. Now last week, as we set the table for the rest of the Mass now, I mentioned how as we heard the Lazarus Gospel, and how the raising of Lazarus and the events tied in with that had so many similarities with what would happen in the life of our Lord and Savior, as well as pointing out that raising from somebody from the dead caused a whole bunch of people to believe in Jesus, and caused a whole bunch of people to tattle on Jesus uh, to those who were in power. That was the effect that it had, the rousing of the nation, as Isaiah would prophesy. The Palm Sunday Liturgy that I chanted from here just a few minutes ago tells us what happened next, that they decided to put him to death. They decided to kill him because of that Lazarus Gospel and everything else that had, gone, that had been going on. It brings us to today and the Gospel that we had. As Isaiah said, the Messiah would have a well-trained tongue, and in this Gospel account of the Passion, Jesus says the right things at some points, and at other points, doesn't say a word. He speaks truth. When he has that chance to speak for freedom, he holds his tongue. As the gospel plays out, we sense 
dread over everything. Uh, but Pilate is afraid to listen, to give in to the crowds. And the purview of all the Jews, their holiest representation, the Pharisees, Sanhedrin, wants to kill this man, wants to release a known murderer instead of releasing Jesus Christ. We know how humanity can be, how we can simply be prone to listening to those in power, following like sheep at times. The reason that they, they reason that because these people want to put Jesus to death, he must be worse than an insurrectionist, a revolutionary, a murderer. Poor feelings about Jesus emanate from this simple process. Posted above Jesus' head in crucifixion are those letters, as we see them, I-N-R-I, uh, playing on Israel's history uh, of kingship and having kings, defaming the name of Jesus by being called king, as he's hanging there naked, beaten, bleeding, and dying. And then Jesus gives up that spirit, that same spirit given to Mary to conceive him, that same spirit that empowered his ministry, that same spirit that we possess from our baptisms. Immediately upon dying, God shows his power over that physical nature of the world, earthquakes, darkness, raising of saintly bodies. It's a hakarah, that gesture from the centurion that truly this was the Son of God. In another moment, many led to believe. That's so why we celebrate today's Mass with confidence, although we're away from our beloved churches, uh, away from those people in our pews that we are so familiar with, that we thought about and that we will be praying for all week. Because we have never wavered in that belief that He is the Son of God. The confidence that we have as we celebrate Holy Mass today in the comfort of our own homes, and that we may offer God our time our prayer, and our everything in this holiest of weeks. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us together proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. King has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father, the Son he gave up for us, 
with love beyond our comprehension. For our friends of blessed memory, Rose, Walter, and Edward Franchek, as Holy Mass is celebrated with their souls in mind this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians everywhere, at the beginning of this Holy Week, we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters that we may follow the example of Jesus, who emptied himself for us, that we might learn to be of service to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer for what they believe, we pray for those in our world who, like Jesus, are unjustly persecuted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a fruitful observance of Holy Week, even in this limited sense, may we use this week for reflection, prayer, repentance, acts of charity, and worship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our neighbors in need of our prayers, especially for the sick and infirmed of our parish, for those inflicted with the uncertainty of COVID-19, for those who worry for many, for uh, uh, many reasons, for those who are ill and cannot receive appropriate treatment, for the healthcare workers charged with carrying an incredible burden, and for all those entrusted to the Lord's care this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of our dearly departed brothers and sisters, especially Rose, Walter, and Edward Franchek, for Paul Mahalik, for all departed friends and family members of our parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our prayer. Lord and Father, with great courage, your Son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you always, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, and I found none. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst, they gave me vinegar to drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. 
May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the benefit of his holy church. Heavenly Father, may the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus, make us pleasing to you. Alone we can do nothing. But may this perfect sacrifice win us mercy and love. We ask this to the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We give thanks to you, God our Father, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, whom in these last days you have sent us as Savior, Redeemer, and Messenger of your will. He is your word, inseparable from you. Through him you have made all things, and in him you were well pleased. You sent him from heaven to a virgin's womb. There he dwelt and was made flesh. He was revealed as your Son, born through the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin. When he suffered, he fulfilled your will and gained for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands to free from suffering those who believed in you. When he was betrayed to his freely chosen suffering, thereby to destroy death, to break the chains of darkness, to crush hell beneath his feet, to give light to the just, to make a covenant, to manifest his resurrection. He took bread. He gave you thanks and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In like manner, he took the cup and said, This is my blood, which is poured out for you. Whenever you do this, do it in memory of me. Calling then his death and resurrection to mind, we offer you the bread and the cup. We thank you for allowing us to come before you and to serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your Holy Church to gather all in unity. Grant to all who partake of these holy mysteries the fullness of the Holy Spirit 
for their strengthening of their faith in the truth. So may we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him may glory and honor be yours with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, now and forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless is not a participation in the blood of Christ, the bread which we break is it not a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. May the union of divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Let us offer each other a sign of his peace. second communion prayer. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for my judgment or condemnation. Though I am unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness, may it become my safeguard and healing remedy. My saving master, awaken in me a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make me your willing servant, zealous to fulfill your holy will. May it at last unite me entirely with you, my Lord and my God. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life.
this cup cannot pass away unless I drink it, your will be done. Let us pray. All loving Father, you have satisfied our hunger with this sacred banquet. The death of your Son gives us hope and strengthens our faith. May his resurrection give us perseverance and lead us to salvation. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Almighty and merciful God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.